Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Yesterday I posted a video which was a little bit about some of the programs for CBIs being closed to Russians. And there was a couple of comments there that were very much along the lines of, hey, you shouldn't support these Russians. And obviously, you know, I have a team who are in uh, Ukraine, so, you know, I kind of have a direct connection to that. Uh, but I've also got certainly a lot of clients in Russia uh, or from Russia, Russians, etc. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And I, I think it ties into a few things that are useful for many people to listen to. One is just from a hiring standpoint, we have a very interesting perspective because the mental model that I'm going to discuss applies to hiring quite well. It also applies to, I think, kind of the application of just how we should think uh, for kind of the betterment of people, etc. And so I wanted to discuss it. And so let's dive in. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for your support. If you'd like help with any of the subjects we deal with here, which are relocating abroad, finding out where to relocate, what the best citizenship is for you, as well as help with international tax optimization. We help you with both the figuring out what the strategy is as well as the implementation. Please reach out to us. You can book a call calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message through our websites offshoreCitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay. So first of all, appreciate the people who took the time to make the comments. If you disagree with me, by all means, please always feel free to comment. I appreciate it when you know, people can give a thoughtful response that's not, uh, I guess, name calling. Sometimes I've noticed comments uh, in some of our videos where people kind of attack in this very name calling way. And just as a general rule, like that's ad hominem, which is like this very not logical way of approaching things. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's good for the culture that we want to create. So generally speaking here, you know, we as people who are interested in being international, and going abroad, et cetera, are in a minority. And so it's good for us to be a good community together where we're kind of supportive, et cetera, and that doesn't mean you can't challenge each other. We absolutely should challenge each other. But on the other hand, uh, it's not good to kind of create these very polarized rivalries where it's, again, just kind of name calling type thing. It doesn't, doesn't look good. So I appreciate people who take the time to give thoughtful uh, challenges. That's certainly how we all improve. Now. I view the situation that is happening to Russians and Belarusians uh, at the moment as effectively tantamount to racism. Now, we've got this really weird thing where we've defined racism in something to do with skin color or whatever. But I think it's worth thinking about why it is that we believe that as a society that racism is quote unquote wrong. And I don't even think about it from a moralistic standpoint, I just think of it from an effectiveness standpoint. Now, in general, I have a quite a strong justice mechanism. And so if I actually believe that somebody is in the wrong and somebody is terrible, I did, for example, the video on the Tinder Swindler thing, and you know, some people are like, oh, you know, he's totally justified. It's like, ah, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think that the guy's basically a piece of shit in terms of how he's acting. And I don't think that should be condoned or encouraged, et cetera, even if you think that he's, you know, kind of sticking it to somebody else. But clearly, uh, from what I can tell anyway, his actions are just kind of despicable. Now, that being said, I think the question of how we evaluate or judge someone is really important. And the basic idea behind why we might say that, hey, listen, somebody should be protected from racism and why racism would, would be a bad thing. Uh, obviously, it's a popular term in kind of woke Western world in really a stupid way because they've turned everything into racism, things that aren't racism into racism, is this notion that you shouldn't judge people based on things that have no causal relationship to what you're, uh, what you're involved in. So you shouldn't basically take one characteristic and apply it to everyone. You shouldn't basically demonize someone where nothing is good, and you shouldn't you know, hero worship them where nothing can be bad. I often will get into conversations with people where if they're very against someone, I'll say, okay, tell me five good things about the person. If you cannot tell me five good things about the person, I don't care who it is, then you're not being objective about it because there's five good things about everybody. And likewise, if you can't tell me five bad things about someone, including myself, then you know, clearly you're off base. So that's, that's just a good little mental model to correct myself and say, okay, am I getting emotional about this or am I seeing things clearly? 
So if I look at something like being Russian, so literally, let's just recognize what's actually going on in the world versus maybe what the narrative is, right? Because the narrative seems to be, you know, these horrible Russian money launderer, oligarch, etc. I mean, I've talked to people who have lived the last 20 years in the US, okay? Last 20 years. They have nothing to do with Russia, really. And yet, because their passport says born in Russia, or their birth certificate says born in Russia, they are excluded from getting passports that other people can get. This really makes no sense. Like, I understand if you're saying, let's try and keep out criminals, okay? There's, there's a logical reason for this. If we're saying, hey, we want to keep out dirty money, okay, there's a logical reason for that. But if you're saying on the basis of where you're born, which A, you have no control over, right? So you largely can't judge people or the, the set of circumstances under which you could judge somebody for something they cannot control is minimal. Now, don't get me wrong. If somebody's in a situation where you know, they're born without legs, it's very unfortunate, but you're not going to put them on you know, the Olympic running team. It's just the way that it goes. So there is like a, an evaluation component that goes into there that says, you know, there may be a causal relationship between how you're born, like you know, something that you can't control rather, and uh, the outcome that we're looking for. And so in that situation, sure. But somebody being born in Russia has nothing to do with anything really. So I think that it's, like, it is literally an example of racism. Uh, whether you want to call it racism or not, probably the definition of racism under laws should be expanded to prevent them from doing that because it is a deep injustice to those people. Uh, a client sent me an article the other day, or a client friend, uh, about someone who is a uh, very wealthy Russian uh, living in UK who is an outspoken critic of everything to do with Ukraine, has nothing to do with Russia, etc but is facing an issue where Russian money is considered toxic. And I can tell you across the board, this is the case. I met with one of our Swiss bankers last week and I was having this conversation with him. I said, how are you dealing with Russians? What's going on? He's like, well, it's a problem. And you know, he was like, yeah, it's racism. It's like, it makes no sense. The Swiss response makes no sense. It's not smart. Um, and, and that's not good. When you think about, and so, you know, how does this apply? Well, this applies to hiring too, right? So you may not be in a situation where you have to judge, okay, are we allowing somebody to have a bank account? Are we allowing somebody to have a passport? But you may be in a situation where you're hiring somebody and what should, what is good hiring practice? Good hiring practice is to discard characteristics or factors that have no influence on the person's ability to effectively do the job. So in other words, maybe there's a bunch of things that I don't agree with or I don't like, et cetera, about the person, but on the other hand, if the person's great at their job, then great. Go for it, have at it. You know, I don't have to agree with you. I shouldn't need to agree with you on everything. I shouldn't need to have to come from a particular background or not. Now, there's times where mental models uh, should include probabilistic determination, and therefore, there is some merit to the idea that you're simplifying your screening process based on uh, controlling for uh, high probability variables. Okay, so what do I, as an example of this? I may find that high probability people who have graduated from university tend to have a higher work ethic than people who have not attended, or work ethic is not the right word. Maybe they have a particular type of thinking, et cetera, on average versus somebody who does not. Now, this is somewhat unfair to people who have not got a degree because you're in a situation where that person could be equally or more capable than all of the other applicants. And so, I think the move towards discarding university as a criteria for hiring in a lot of situations is a smart one. But on the other hand, if you have 10,000 applicants and you need to filter it down, or heck, even if you have 300 applicants in your small business, you need to filter it down somehow. So starting to apply probabilistic variables to narrow that pool makes some sense, okay? Makes some sense. But in the case of somebody being from Russia, that's not the case. Literally, you have 144 million people or so. Uh, if we account for all the people who are living abroad who have not lived there for years, it's a higher number. And how many of these people, I mean, you can look at the sanctions list. I don't know, it's what, 300 people or something like that? Just say, say it's 1,000 people. All right, the probabilities that one of the people who's applying is tied in in some negative way is simply outrageously low. And then we can look at this because Somebody might come and say, oh, you know, you're supporting these people who are, you know, doing these horrible things. Well, look, look, if you want to make the argument that we should 
be going against people who their country has attacked some other country, the top of the list should be the US. No country that I can think of in the world in the last 100 years, the last 50 years, has gone to war more times with foreign nations than the US. And you can just run down the list and you can see this is the case. So there's a double standard there that makes zero sense. So I'm, I'm a really big advocate of the idea of let's have clear thinking. And clear thinking and fair thinking says, okay, we're trying to achieve this objective. Is there a causal relationship between the factor that I'm using to relate or not? Or in certain circumstances where we need to be able to narrow very quickly because we have large numbers, is there a probabilistic relationship between these two so that I can narrow down and then pick from you know, a bunch of people who are relatively good? And if a person is not thinking that way, I think you're missing out. So that's helpful on hiring, it's helpful on a bunch of these other things. And I think it's really, really worth understanding that you know, we shouldn't paint people in a brush that doesn't have that kind of relationship. So tell me what you think, put it in the comments below, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.